الحمد لله فكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن وقال سبحانه وتعالى في مقام آخر لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به إن علينا جمعه وقرآنه فإذا قرأناه فاتبع قرآنه ثم إن علينا بيانه وقال الله تعالى في مقام آخر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله واتقوا الله إن الله سميع عليم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعدكم لبعد كجهر بعدكم لبعد أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون إن الذين يغدون أصواتهم عند رسول الله أولئك الذين امتحن الله قلوبهم للتقوى لهم مغفرة وأجر عظيم إن الذين ينادونك من وراء الحجرات أكثرهم لا يعقلون ولو أنهم صبروا حتى تخرج إليهم لكان خيرا لهم والله غفور رحيم صدق الله العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم I hope that uh, inshallah everybody is able to get full benefit from this beautiful month of Ramadan and Ramadan is the month of Quran Ramadan is the month where Allah subhan when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down his beautiful book And what ulama have said that all the books were, were, were revealed in this beautiful month of, of Ramadan. And Quran is also sent down in this book, in this month. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. That month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran is being revealed. And there are different levels of revelation. There is Inzal and then there is Tanzil. The first sort of revelation was when the whole Quran was sent down from the from the seventh heaven to the first heaven. And then it was revealed on the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam piecemeal by piecemeal and it also started in the month of Ramadan so Ramadan has a special connection with Quran and that is the reason that all of our ulama and all of our mashaykh have always dedicated this month to Quran most of the ulama most of the mashaykh have they leave their mamulad they leave their their, their normal routines, their, their normal schedules and they dedicate this month to Quran and our mashaykh have 
especially made special they have made special du'as for the people who emphasize on the Quran in this very month and this these sessions that we are planning to have for the next 10 11 days inshallah is just to gain those special du'as from our mashaykh and of course like 10 11 12 days are not enough to to um, to do the whole, to go over the whole Quran, but what I thought of was to, to, like maybe possibly take a few select surahs and go over those surahs. There are the whole Quran. Number one is 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 the is the is the speech of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Every single word that is revealed in this holy book is there for a purpose. In fact, every single single walling in this beautiful book is for a purpose. Right? That is the reason that it is absolutely necessary for everybody to learn how to recite the Quran properly. Because a few a walling can change the meanings, right? And that is the reason we also need to learn the tajweed. We also need to learn um, uh, the the proper recitation. And one thing that we need, all need to also understand is that the meanings of the Quran are revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. As the speech, as the wordings of the Quran are revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the meanings of the verses of the Quran are also revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verses that are recited in the very beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam لَا تُحَرِّكْ بِهِ لِسَانَكَ لِتَعْجَلَ بِهِ When Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam used to take the Qur'an down to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to recite it very quickly so that he could memorize so that when Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam he goes back he doesn't forget that so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is giving him a comfort in these verses he says that Oh, my beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, don't hurry up in reciting when Qur'an is given to you. لا تحرك به لسانك Don't move your tongue very quickly. لتعجل بي إن علينا جمعه وقرآنا That it is upon us that we are going to gather this Qur'an in your heart. فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَ ثُمَّ إِنَّ عَلَيْنَا بَيَانَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it is also upon us, that is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He is going to give, make Him understand the meanings of the Qur'an as well. So, the Qur'an are, is, are, are the, is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the meanings behind those beautiful words, the blessed words of the Qur'an are also given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So that is, I mean, one of the fitnas, one of the ignorance, jihalat of our time is that people try to understand the Qur'an, they just read the translation, word by word translation and they try, they try to interpret the Qur'an on their own. This is ignorance. We need to understand that the, the, the commentary, the tafsir of the Qur'an is also given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he taught it to the Sahaba, the companions radiallahu anhu and may Allah be pleased with all of them and then they passed down this tafsir, this commentary to us. Yeah. And the Qur'an is light. It is Nur. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given different names to the Qur'an. It is something that differentiates between right and wrong. It is Al-Furqan. It is light. It is Nur. It is guidance. It is Shifa. It is cure for the heart. Shifa ul-lima fi sudur. It is a cure for, for, for the things that are in the hearts. The Qur'an, we, we should develop that special love with the Qur'an. We should try to read the Qur'an thinking that this, this, is, this is the speech of my Lord, this is the speech of my Rabb. And that is the reason one of the hadiths near meanings 
Prophet ﷺ said that when you read the Qur'an, you should cry. You should have tears in your eyes. And if you are not able to cry because your hearts are hard, then at least make the face as if you are, yes, as if you are crying. So we should develop that special love of the Qur'an. One of my very beautiful, blessed teachers, Mulana Sajjad Nomani, one of the bigger scholars, one of the biggest scholars of, of, of India, son of Mulana Manzoor Nomani, Rahmatullah Ali, he said, he said once to, to, to me, he said he still has one copy of the Qur'an that his mother used to recite. And he said that every single page of that book, of that Mus'haf, of Quran, that of uh, his mother's Mus'haf. He said every single page, the lower bottom of that of every single page, is 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 uh, is soggy, right? As if like some liquid has fallen onto the page, and the and the wrink and the wrinkles have come onto the page. And he said that it wasn't because that any I mean anybody spilled some water over it or any other liquid. He said when my mother used to recite the Quran, she used to cry with tears reading every single word and and the tears used to fall on the on on the page of the mushaf and and that's how that mushaf became like that and he said that she wasn't even an alima she wasn't like very well versed in arabic she didn't really like understood exactly every single word that she was reciting it was just because of her love for the quran she knew what it is she knew what she was reciting Right. So every single word of this book is by Allah, it's the speech of Allah. And we should try to think that this is what it is. It is not to be just put, put, just to be put on the shelves and wrapped in beautiful covers. Sure, right, of course this is, we, we should do proper adab of the Qur'an. And that's another fitna that people don't do proper adab of this book as well. They put it on the floor, they put it like the... And they use that pillow, Billah. Right? So we should do proper adab of the Quran, but the, the best adab of the Quran is that when we recite this book, we should have we should our hearts should be filled with love of this book and then we should feel as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to me. And every single verse in this Quran is beautiful. And it's very hard that, you know, when you have to choose something from this book as to which verses you should choose. Because every word, every single verse is, is a gem. But there are a few surahs in the Qur'an which are for a normal person, for a common person. They, it is necessary for them to read those and to understand those. And some of our mashayikh uh, they say that when, especially when women, when women, when girls grow up and we, when they have to get married, they say that they always teach these young girls three surahs before they get married and go to their own own homes, their own houses. They said that one is Surah Nur, the second is uh, Surah Yusuf, and the third is Surah Al Hujarat. They said because these three surahs. If somebody really understands these three surahs, I mean, they will develop the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will develop the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the two basic necessary elements of everybody's life. They will know the, 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 the rulings of hijab. They will know the rulings of dealing with, with other people. Right? And they will, they will know the rulings of modesty. So these are the main things that everybody needs to have in their lives. So I thought that, inshallah, if, I mean, as I said, this is just like mimic, mimicking those people who do the tafsir of the whole, tafsir of the Qur'an in this beautiful month. So inshallah, we'll not be able to cover the whole Qur'an, but at least we will... Uh, <laughs> We'll try to do something so that our name is also written, inshallah, in the list of those people who, who, who dedicate this month to this beautiful book. So, inshallah, we'll start with Surah, surah Al-Hujurat, and then we'll see, inshallah, how far we can go. I don't know if we, will, if we will even be able to cover this one surah or not, but inshallah, let's, uh, I mean, I, I, I want that everybody understands the 
um, uh, understands the the purpose and the goal behind these these tafsir sessions, inshallah. So Surah Al Hujurat, which is the Surah number forty-nine, this Surah has has many many messages. And message number one is to do the proper adab, the proper respect of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the other things that are mentioned in this surah are how to deal with common people, what, what sort of relationship or what sort of feelings we should have in our hearts for other people, for the other fellow Muslims, brothers and sisters. And the surah also talks about the belief in the heart. So, inshallah, we'll start with the, the first few verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, بَعْدَ عَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ Before that, the hujrat, it means, it's, it's a plural of hujra, and hujra is like an apartment. Right? And, These apartments which uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have spoken about in this surah are the apartments or the houses or the blessed houses of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of his wives, they used to live in separate apartments. So these were basically the apartments or the houses of the, of the Ummahat al-Mu'mineen, the mothers of the, of the, of the believers. And these were very simple apartments. And Ibn Sa'd, on the authority of Ata al Khurasani, he, he has given a little bit of description of these apartments. He's, he writes that these apartments were built of palm branches, and their doors were covered with thick black woolen curtains. So there wasn't even like proper wooden doors. And Imam Bukhari, rahmatullah alayhi, in Al-Adab al-Mufrat, in his book, and in Bayqi, in his collection, he recorded that, you know, Da'ud ibn Qais had visited these houses, and he estimated that from the door of the apartment to the roof part of the building, it must be about like seven cubits. So there was like a courtyard, right, uh, which was open, and then there was like a, a room. And he said that the room was about 10 cubits, and the height of the roof was about 8 cubits. So you can understand, like, 1 cubit is around 18 inches. So, this was the, this was the, these were the palaces of the Prophet wasallam. Very simple, and, but the thing is that, that they were all, all the, all the mothers of the believers, the Ummahat al muminin they were living peacefully in these beautiful palaces of theirs, right? Because the peace is in the heart. Peace is not in, 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 in the, uh, in, in what they have or what we have in the houses. So, inshallah, we'll talk about why is this surah named as Surah al hujurat It is a Madinan surah, and it has 18 verses. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yadillahi wa rasoolihi wa attaqullah inna allaha sameeun alim Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu la tarfa'u aswaadakum fawqa sawti al-nabi wa la tajharu lahu bilqawli kajahri ba'dikum li ba'd an tahbata a'malukum wa antum la tashuroon that O oh, you who believe, that you claim to be the believers, you claim that you have Iman in your heart, that you have belief in your heart, you say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa with your tongue, that if you say that, then know 
That do not proceed ahead of Allah and His Messenger. And fear Allah, have taqwa in your heart. Inna Allah sami'un alim. Bain al yadain it literally means between the two hands. But in Arabic, it's also used as in front of or ahead of. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that do not go ahead or in front of Allah's Messenger. Right? And the Quran does not say that in one what matter they are prohibited from preceding Him. Like it would appear that it's a general prohibition that includes proceeding by word or proceeding by deeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that do not proceed in front of Allah and His Messenger. And wait for the Prophet sallallahu reply until he himself appoints someone to reply. And likewise, if he's walking, no one should overtake him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the adab, the etiquettes, to, uh, to, to be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is very amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is telling the etiquettes of, as to how to deal with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are many, many uh, uh, narrations as to why these verses were were revealed, and one of the narratives is which is reported by Bukhari is that once some people from the tribe of Tamim they came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and during their stay, one of the issues was under discussion as to who to appoint uh, as a ruler of that tribe. And who, who is to be appointed as the ruler of that tribe? And Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he suggested a name. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, he proposed another name. And while both of them were discussing this issue for a while, their voices became a little loud. And these voices were revealed in this background. Okay. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you have to wait until the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he himself comes 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 up with an idea, right? Or he allows you to to go ahead with the conversation with that that you're going with, right? And what our ulama have said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala though is teaching the adab, the etiquettes of how to deal with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the same is true when dealing with the ulama and the mashayikh. When dealing with the scholars and the religious leaders and the spiritual guides. Because they are the warasatul anbiya, they are the heirs of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw Sayyidina Abu Darda radiallahu an walking in front of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an. Now none of them is a Prophet, right? Both are the Sahaba radiallahu an majma'een. But Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he reprimanded Sayyidina Abu Darda radiallahu an. He's saying that you are walking in front of a person who is better than you in this world and in the hereafter. And then he added, he said, the sun did not rise or set on any man better than Abu Bakr in the world beside the prophets. So the ulama, the scholars have ruled that the teachers, the ulama, and the spiritual guide, the mashayikh, should be also treated with a similar respect as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving in these verses of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawti al-nabi, wa la tajharu lahu bilqawli ka jahri ba'dikum li ba'd, an tahbata amalukum wa antum la tashurun. That do not raise your voices above the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is another etiquette to be observed while in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this verse is teaching that the believers, the, the people of Iman, they should not raise their voices above the voice of the Prophet 
and nor should they speak aloud to him as one speaks aloud to another in general discussions. And then it says that that neglecting this small etiquette may entail nullification of one's amal, the deeds, one, one's virtuous deeds. Because this is kind of a disrespect to the Prophet And when this verse was revealed, the Sahaba became very apprehensive and became very, very cautious. Sayyidina Abu Bakr he said, By Allah, O Messenger of Allah وسلم, from now till my last breath I shall speak to you as if someone is whispering. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu his voice became so low that the Prophet وسلم, had to ask him to repeat what he used to say so that he could understand what he was saying to him. Sayyidina Thabit ibn Qais radiallahu anh, he had a naturally very loud voice, like it was his, his very natural. When he heard this verse, he was so afraid that his good deeds would be rendered void. So he started weeping and he, st he like literally, he lowered his voice. And Sayyidina Qadi Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, bin ibn Arabi, he says that the respect of the Prophet وسلم, after his demise, after his blessed death, is just as mandatory as it was during the lifetime of the Prophet. And some of the ulama they have said that it is disrespectful to say salam or speak loudly in the front of the Prophet. And also, it is very Discourteous is very against etiquettes and adab to make noises where Prophet Sallallahu tradition is, is being recited or when the blessed words of the Prophet Sallallahu are being recited. It is mandatory, it is compulsory to listen to them very silently. And also, as I said in the, in the, in, in the previous verse, Allah Subhanahu uh, the ulama, this also say that similarly one should not raise their voices above the voice of the Prophet uh, as one should not raise uh, their voices above the voice of the Prophet Sallallahu they should also do to the ulama and the mashaykh when sitting in their assembly and then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when he said Antahbata amalukum wa antum la tashurun that your deeds will be like it may happen that your deeds will be, be, be destroyed and you will not even know of that and ulama have a long discussion as to what does it mean that because the deeds are only destroyed if somebody loses their iman right and this losing of the iman is somebody's voluntary act it is not like you know somebody uh, suddenly loses their their deeds or somebody you know they do kufr while they're not they don't even know that they're doing disbelief so they say that 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 you know, when people raise their voices in the front of the Prophet وسلم, it is very much possible that he may get hurt by that. Right? And if he gets hurt, right, then or like like a, by by advancing forward or raising voices, even though they don't have intention of hurting him, but if it hurt him or offend him, then it is a possibility that they will they will lose the du'as of the Prophet وسلم, right? And because they are going to lose the the du'a of the Prophet وسلم, then the, the the belief that's in the heart that is that is because of the because of the du'as and because of the barakah of respecting the Prophet وسلم, that that the, they, these person may lose that belief in their hearts and, and they may do few things that they're going to destroy their deeds. Right? So this is we, we have to be very, very cautious that we should do the proper adab of the Prophet. And ulama have also said of tafsir that the same things are applied again to, to the ulama and the mashaykh that one should be very respectful for to them so that they may not hurt them they may not advance in front of them they may should, may, should not speak loudly in front of them because because Allah subhanahu because they are the awliya of Allah they are the friends of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares war with those people who go against the, 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 his, his friends right?
and then the verses go on and inshallah the, the thing is that I've kept it very small and I had to get some little bit of introduction as well as to uh, about the Quran the beauty of the Quran and the, and the importance of this month with the Quran so inshallah from tomorrow what we'll do is inshallah we'll go to jump directly on the ayat inshallah and we'll continue with with the tafsir and inshallah my goal is to inshallah ta'ala uh, finish at least this surah and inshallah be able to do another surah at least start another surah so that we can at least build a temple so that when we go out of this month we will develop it a little bit of love or maybe inshallah a lot of love for this beautiful book and what we uh, we, we start in this month will take it uh, out of this month as well and I encourage every single one of you please that you try to finish uh, the whole Quran in this month please read it cover to cover this is the month of Quran we should all try to read all of it in this month and get those special blessings, the special barakah that comes along with reading of this book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَا وَأَنْسِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ When the Qur'an is being recited then you should listen You should listen to it very attentively and you should keep quiet so that you're being shown mercy. So uh, I also encourage every single one of you, especially men, that uh, you should uh, go to masjid and, and try to uh, like attend the Taraweeh where the whole Quran is being recited and try to listen to every single word of the Quran when it's recited with with other and so that we are shown mercy and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what we are living on really so inshallah with this uh, I know it's a very short time but uh, I also know that people are uh, tired uh, who are uh, in the eastern part of the world it's very late for them inshallah we have to get up in the morning to to take suhoor and, and for the hajjud as well and uh, and in other parts of the world it might be uh, close to the time of iftar so inshallah not take much of your time uh, so inshallah we'll uh, finish with dua alhamdulillah rabbil alameen اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب يا رحم الرحمين يا أكرم الأكرمين يا الله يا الله we thank you يا الله for this beautiful month of Ramadan Ya Allah, we thank you that you have given us Iman, Ya Allah, that you have allowed us to live in this beautiful month so that we be able to absorb the enormous mercy that is falling down in this, this beautiful month. Ya Allah, we beg you, Ya Rahman Rahimeen, that you, Ya Allah, give us tawfiq, that we be able to recognize the beauty of this month and we be able to recognize the beauty of your beautiful book, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. Ya Akram al Akrameen, Ya Arham al Rahimeen, Ya Allah, make this book, Ya Allah, the light of our hearts, Ya Allah, make this book, Ya Allah, the source of our guidance, Ya Allah, please make this book, Ya Allah, our, the, 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 uh, the, the reason of us entering into your paradise, Ya Arham al Rahimeen, Ya Allah, give us tawfiq that we'll be able to understand this book, Ya Allah, and we'll be able to act on every single command that you've given us in this beautiful book, Ya Arham al Rahimeen, Ya Akram al Akrameen, Ya Arham al Rahimeen, Ya Allah, you yourself have said, Ya Allah, that whoever fasts in this month with an intention that they're going to get reward from Allah, Ya Allah, then you forgive them all of their previous sins. Ya Allah, and you have you also said that whoever stands at night, in, in a hope of reward from you, Ya Allah, then you forgive them of their previous sins. Ya Allah, we beg you, Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, that we have all hopes, Ya Allah, from you, of your mercy. Ya Allah, we are fasting and standing in, in the prayer at night with a hope of reward from you, Ya Allah, only for your sake. Ya Arhamar Rahimeen, Ya Akram al Akrameen, we beg you, Ya Allah, that you forgive us of all our previous sins. And Ya Allah, you give us tawfiq that we be able to 
live on to the mercy that we will get in this very month and Ya Allah we will be able to live the life according to your command according to your obedience in, in all the rest of our lives Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta sunyul alim wa taba alayna inna kanta tawab rahim sallallahu wa ta'ala ala khayri khalqihi muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in برحمتك يا رحم الرحمين الحمد لله